then I need to let's think. Oh yeah, I need to create the closing results. Results closing result object. So I need to set the ray to be collidable with the geometry store it in collision results object then we're going to say if the collision results size is greater than zero that means that the ray has collided with one of the collidable objects I'm going to first of all draw a line from the control shift I first from the camera location I'm going to set it to the collision results get closest collision first of all I think I'll just create a variable to store this because I might use it more than once Equals to collision vector 3f control shift I what's wrong? Collision result okay. Collision result control shift I and then it's closest dot get to collision point, get contact point. So this is going to draw a line from the camera directly to where the ray intersects after I've pressed G on the keyboard. I'm going to create a geometry out of this line. So this G1 geometry. The name of the line. With a line mesh. I'm going to create a new material for this. Asset manager. Common. Not def. So it's going to use the unshaded material definition again. HND. So on this line. Okay, probably I imported the wrong line, which I did. I don't want math line. I want scene shape. Control Shift I. Sorry, I did that wrong. Okay, that should work. Brilliant. I'm going to attach the material to the geometry. Attach it to the root node to make it visible. Okay. Alt Shift F just to format it a little bit. And Shift F6 and let's see if it's worked. Okay. I'm going to face it. I'm going to press G and error. Unsupported collision exception. Why? <laughs> Maybe it needs to be G and Ray, I'm not too sure. Let's try it that way. G, okay. okay so I did it wrong. But yeah, as you can see, it created a line from where I pressed G all the way to the collision point. I'm now going to change the color of the line so you can actually see it. And now, okay, to make it easier, I'm going to put a plus in the middle of the screen so you can actually see where you're pointing. And I believe there is a palette a script for this. I'm just going to take over the HUD text from the palette in the interface section. You get rid of this, I don't need that. I control shift I to import bitmap text. And I'm going to okay, I'll keep the size the same. I'm going to change this text 
28 plus to act as the crosshair. I'm going to set the location of this to be, I could use the settings variable to get the width. And I need to minus the, the, the width of the plus sign because in JME, okay, I don't have my other program running so I can't draw on the screen, but let me just get rid of this for now. So it's local translation will be at zero zero. Press OK. As you can see, you can't see it on the screen. And it is because I can get out of this. Nope, never mind. It's because it is located at the very bottom left, out of the way of both the Y and the X axis. So if I move it anywhere along the Y, I won't see it, and anywhere along the X, I won't see it either. I need to move it both up and right. But if I just use settings.getWidth, I would divide it by 2. This won't center it exactly, it will be off by a little bit. And it, so to correct it, I need to minus get line width. I then need to times that by a half to position it correctly. I'm then going to do the same for the y axis. Settings dot get height. To times that by a half, but in this case, I need to add the line height. Hello, text line height. Now, I would try to draw it to explain it a bit better, but I don't have my program turned on, so I cannot do that, I'm afraid. And actually, I will get rid of the other text. In case it gets in the way, attach all children. I could have used the. Actually, I probably should do it the better way now, using the new constructor arguments for the super. So I'm just going to call it super. I'm just going to give it null. Oh no, actually. I need the fly cam app state, so I'm going to say new fly cam app state. Control shift i. So now I'm only going to get the app state. I'm not going to get the debug keys, and I'm not going to get the the, um, the frames per second text or the other frame buffer text. I forgot what that's called. So I'm going to control shift f6, and hopefully I should have a white. Yeah, I have a white crosshair. Directly in the center of the screen. I'm going to change the color of it. Let's see if I can see how to do this. Hello, text. I need to get the material. So I think I need to cast hello, text to a geometry. So I can get the material object from it. No, that's not going to work. And why not? I'm going to control shift B on this. It extends node. Okay, so I'm going to so take a wild guess here. I'm going to get child zero, which I assume contains the geometry. I'm going to cast that to a geometry. I'm going to get the material of that. I'm going to set the color to be let's say green. Shift F6 to make sure it actually works. Awesome. Let's try and make it a bit bigger. Get rendered size. Let's times that by three. Okay, it might be a bit fuzzy, but it's a lot bigger now. Okay, so change the line color. Change that color so you should be able to see it now. Okay, so back to why we actually are doing this tutorial. And that is to find the direction of the reflected vector. So, first of all, I'm going to create a new arrow, which I'll use to 
depict the direction of the reflected vector. Yeah, arrow, arrow, control shift I, control space. So I'm going to fa face this in the Z direction. And I'm going to multiply it by 2. I'm going to create a new geometry out of the arrow. It's 2. New geometry. Call it arrow. By the arrow mesh. Create a new material. Sign of the asset manager. I'm going to use unshaded again. GFND. Pass the material to the geometry. And then I need to attach it to the root node. Attach to G2. Okay. So now that I've got the arrow created, I then, I'm then going to create the quaternion from the axis of where the ray intersects the quad. So create a quaternion. I'm going to, and I first need to know the angle at which. Okay. okay I've, I've turned on the new program now so I can draw to the screen. So if you remember, drawing the x and y axis, if I have a normal here and I have a reflection, I'm going to face it the other way for now. I mean, if I have a direction and then I need to find this angle here. So that I can use that angle, rotate, turn it into a quaternion, and then rotate that vector by that quaternion amount, and it will give me the reflected direction. Because it will be doing it like that. Okay, so okay, no, but it would actually rotate the normal vector like that. Okay, so let's get rid of that. So I need to find the axis, and I'm going to use the cross product for that. Vector to the axis. I need the normal. So we say vector to the normal vector is going to equal closest collision get contact normal. <laughs> 